Take the Sixers, especially at the end, 23 in total, but none bigger than that one at the end of the game as we welcome you here. Sixers post game live brought to you by Cure Auto Insurance. Amy Fudel, Jim Lynham, and Mark Zumoff going to join us in just a second. But guys, I'm going to start with you. I mean, when you turn the ball over 23 times, that's going to be the story of the game. But Zoo, you said it. <laughs> wow was when you saw Tobias Harris under the basket. He gets caught in no man's land and he stepped on the end line. Yeah, it was an opportunity, I think, for the officials to go to replay if they wanted. Yeah. You could do that in the you could do that in the final two minutes, and they decided not to do it. But in microcosm, the story of the night, you mentioned it turnovers, 23, which is way too many, at six above the average. And keep in mind, they had 20 turnovers after three quarters, and that's the one thing you didn't want to do to a Memphis team, which isn't an especially good team in the half court. They thrive on getting turnovers. They're among the NBA leaders in transition points, points off of turnovers, you name it. And the Sixers, unfortunately, tonight played right into their hands. Crossing it over with our Mark Zumoff, who called this game. And Jimmy, it seemed like the Sixers got right back in this one. We're watching it down here, and we're getting to see the behind the scenes, which is my favorite part of having the guys in the studio. But it really was the seesaw, to borrow a zoo expression. And you thought for a second, you know what, they, they have a chance to pull this one out. They did have a chance, Aim. As uh, Allah said, they got key stops down the stretch to put themselves in position to win this game. But it's, uh, it's really, uh, to me, just discouraging when you work so hard to be able to have a chance to win a game and then not get a shot. Uh, Tobias, you know, going left there, he should have pulled up and just shot the jumper on the move. He took an extra dribble. As Allah said, he positioned himself behind the plane of the backboard. And now he picks his dribble up. He's not sure what he wants to do. And as a result, stepped on the end line. So they are 0-3 right now without Joel Embiid. The first game we saw was the, the Cavaliers game where he was the only starter missing. And then the next one, obviously, Zoo was the one where there was, they only had seven players. But a game like this, when you have another one tomorrow, knowing you're not going to have Embiid, do you have to quickly forget it? What can you take away from this one? Unfortunately, Amy, they have very little time to forget it, mm -hmm. and not simply because it's a back-to-back. -back. They have to go a little bit further west and south, A, and B, they play an hour earlier than they did tonight. So the turnaround is very short, not much time to prepare at all. And Oklahoma City, they are sitting right now in their town waiting for them, having just played on Friday. So it's not going to be easy, but the Sixers, they could show some medal. Maybe they could steal one against the Thunder and split the two games. Speaking of showing some medal, Shake Milton, another terrific game. This kid has done everything the Sixers have asked, especially on a night where some of the stars did not have the best scoring output. Tobias Harris scoring a bunch late, Ben Simmons obviously off his game. What are you seeing from, from the second-year player? A lot of really good things. First of all, he worked very hard during the offseason. He's come back stronger. He's been able to play through contact. He went to the line seven times in this game. He made six free throws. His three-point shot, he was struggling with it earlier. Now he's getting much better. And he's someone that the Sixers can really rely on coming off the bench. In fact, for a while, he kept Tobias Harris pinned to the bench. Harris had been mm -hmm. struggling. And I want to give Tobias credit because even though he had been struggling, came in, actually did give the Sixers a lift late. But unfortunately, that out-of-bounds play ended up costing the team in the end. Yeah, Jim, it was probably not a surprise that they go with Tobias Harris, given he had let their last couple of buckets down the stretch. Did you like what they were trying to draw up for him? Yeah, I did. Uh, the two buckets he got aim came from like penetration from up top to the center, mm -hmm. uh, kind of into the foul line area, maybe just breaking that. Whereas at the end of the game, he was kind of heading with left hand down to the baseline. It's not my favorite maneuver, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, I think there's a little edge there to the defense. And maybe that's why Tobias didn't shoot that jumper off the dri uh, dribble. How frustrating is it as a coach when you see four seconds left and you think that's, that's more than enough time to get across the timeline and get a shot off? Yeah, I think uh, more than anything, what that shows to me, you don't have enough practice time. Mm -hmm. You can only practice but so many things. Uh, obviously, to be able to get a shot when you don't have any timeouts off the free throw. The Sixers did their job in rebounding the three throw, but they weren't really as organized as you'd like to be given the situation with the clock in that situation. By the way, I want to make one thing clear. We talked about uh, perhaps the officials going to replay in the final two minutes on the Tobias Harris out of bounds play. You have a coach's challenge still in your pocket in Doc Rivers, but you cannot use that in the last two uh, minutes, just to be clear about that. Yes, because I imagine on social media we're going to see why didn't he challenge that. So Zoo answering that question, I'm sure it's being asked if I check my phone, because I thought they were going to look at that. It seemed like something normal because it was so close. It was such a bang-bang play. But the next thing you know, they already uh, have John Morant shooting the free throws at the other end. 
four seconds is enough time. I know we can rehash this one a little bit more, but when it comes down to crunch time, Jimmy brings up a good point. You don't have Joel Embiid in this one, and you don't have a lot of practice. It, it, it's a learning experience, even if it comes at a loss. You're talking about that final play, yes. right. So I think that's why they put Tyrese Maxey in, in case he ends up with the ball. It's also another shooter. Mm -hmm. He ends up not really having a very good look there. And uh, I'm sure the coach could tell you, uh, plays like that are rehearsed all the time in practice. Yeah. And I say that thinking that today's NBA teams don't practice anymore. It's all about what you could cram in during a shoot around uh, just unfortunately for the Sixers in a desperate situation would have been great had they been able to steal a game with Tyrese Maxey hitting a game winning three uh, but it was not to be it was going to be awesome but you know what they have a chance to get one back tomorrow night Mark Zumoff we will see you tomorrow for that game against the Thunder thanks so much for joining it. us for Pleasure. the crossover all right let's check out our Colonial Nissan game changer always give you the best option when the game is on the line they're only down five points this is where the defense Sixers turns especially into at the end of and can right Jim for sure uh, and as a result of plays like that the Sixers uh, got themselves back in you know with a very good chance to win this game uh, the ability to get stops in the last two minutes of a game is huge and this is without you know your backstop Joel Embiid in the lineup so give Dwight Howard some credit so you see the uh, the jump ball, which went the Sixers' way. There's the, another little in the lane jumper that you were talking about, and then yeah, that's an ill-advised pass. Turnover. You, you cannot uh, have that turnover. It's that that simple. Even if the ball gets there, you know it's not like you know your guy's going to go get a layup. And here's the play where Tobias runs out of room. You can see he's underneath the see the underneath the plane of the board. He took one dribble too much. When you're penetrating like that left, Tobias has to be able to pull up off his dribble and shoot the jumper on the move. And then John Moran. 5.1 seconds. I knew it was five. Yeah. Yeah, see? But see, the, the, the open court, Amy, you'd rather have the ball in the middle of the court so you have options to your left, options to your right. Bend is pinned on the sideline, which lets a defense converge to that side of the court. He does a good job, you know, maneuvering, but you can see he can't really get a full head of steam. If you stay in the center of the court, you can. But the Sixers were a little disorganized on the play. Yeah, I don't think, even if Maxie's shot had gone in, I don't think that that would have counted because I think it was after, after the buzzer. buzzer. I believe so. Very so close. See, here's the, uh, the games without Joel and B. That Cavaliers one was just a debacle. Uh, the Nuggets game, the reason they were in that was John, or, uh, John Moran. <laughs> Tyrese Maxey had 39 points. And then, of course, Shake Milton really coming up big for them tonight when some of the other guys really struggle. But I, I, I hate to, to really berate it, but on the out-of-bounds play, it was out of a timeout. So on the floor, we had Dwight Howard and, and Ben Simmons. These are obviously not shooters. Would you like to have seen at that point Tyrese Maxey didn't come in until, until after that. Would you like to see maybe Maxey come in just to give you an extra shooter, an extra option? Not necessarily. Am I, yeah, I'm not as uh, much uh, 